Pleasure to work. Greg is well known nationally for his work on the issues of bullying, hate crimes, inclusion, and acceptance. He makes it his mission helping people of all ages discover their legacy and leave a positive mark on their community. He works every day to help people find the best in themselves and others. And he continues his passion to reach out to communities across the USA. Northern Michigan, please welcome Greg R. Baird. So I haven't been busy at all, to be honest with you. I'm not doing much of uh, anything in my downtime. <clears throat> so how is everybody tonight? Of course, I don't see any familiar faces in the crowd at all. So felt like a uh, wedding reception there when I got here or something. So anyway, uh, hello, those of you that don't know me. Yes, uh, I, I used to live here at one time, and I'm going to kind of run over a little bit of a history for you and some of you that do know me, this may come to a little bit of a surprise on some things that I'm going to go over. So I'm going to, I have a lot to cover tonight. I'm very honored at the end of my lecture to present uh, a film that I uh, did down at Pulse Nightclub, and I can talk a little bit about that, uh, called 202 AM. And uh, then I'll show the film and close and take some Q&A and see what you have to say. Something else I want to share with you, uh, this is one of my favorite pictures of my brother and I, and I always made these faces all the time and it really pissed my brother off. And like, any picture of us together, I was probably doing that. I don't know why, I can't even tell you. But one thing is, my brother and I are both adopted, we're both adopted from different families, and my parents hit the homosexual lotto because they have two gay sons. <laughs> Isn't that special? They didn't think so, uh, but I thought that was kind of cool. It saved my relationship with my brother. Home here. One, two, three. Hey, guys, home here. Beautiful. So we're all on the same page. I know this community has dealt uh, with a few, few things at the high school. Um, a few things, and, and children and our teenagers find out that it's okay to hate. And it's okay to dislike other people. Our children have an ability in them, or ability, it's given, it, they like, it's easier for them to hate. I don't want to eat that. I don't want to wear those clothes. I don't like her. I don't like him. And then what, what do we do? People will say, girls will be girls, boys will be boys, and they shrug it off, and that's it. That's the explanation. What we all need to do as a community and our parents is not have our children make sweeping generalizations about people from different religions, different backgrounds, different colors, and yes, also the gay community. We have done a huge disservice with, and I'm not just speaking this because I'm a gay man, uh, we have done a huge disservice against the LGBT community and how we've treated that community. We've done a huge disservice on how we've treated our Muslim community, our transgender community, our black community, and a lot of that has spiked before and after our election. Um, you pro I probably don't need to tell anybody here who I voted with, and I don't get political, but we need to be better people at what we're educating our children. Hate is a learned behavior. It happens either at home, on social media, or whatever they're watching on TV. And we need to be better stewards of what we're doing and how we're, I don't want to say policing our children, but educating them. One thing that bothers me a lot is uh, we live in fear because we're not storytelling anymore. We're not telling our stories who we are. Because you know why? Everybody's caught up with a cell phone, the apps on the phone. Somebody asked me yesterday, well, um, what do I do uh, for the apps? Like, how do I know what's right and what's wrong when I send information out? And I said, let me put it this way. If it's not positive for you, your family, your friends, and your community on what you're posting, don't post it at all. It's horrible that schools have to contend with, I know um, just this few weeks ago, uh, it was the 18th anniversary of the Columbine shooting. And what do people do on the 18th anniversary of the Columbine shooting? They call schools up 
and uh, they do bomb threats. Not appropriate. It's not appropriate, it's not legal, <clears throat> and for one thing, you're doing a huge disservice and not even respecting the people that were killed, the 13 students that were shot there. The Sandy Hook Elementary School, the children that were shot, people still call elementary schools on that day. The Pulse nightclub, I cannot tell you. For me, I don't have safe havens in a lot of places to go to. My home is one when I go out with friends and right out of Chicago, but think about it here, for people, they really don't have a whole lot of places to go to to find community and a safe haven to be at. So, for a lot of the people in my community, they have potlucks, they have get-togethers, they have Friendsgiving uh, because their families are not walking them home for Thanksgiving. Our bars are another place. We're not going there to be promiscuous. We're going there to meet other people, like-minded people, our allies, our straight allies, people that believe in community and believe in love, and love is love is love. And what happens is we have somebody on June 12th last year came in and killed 49 people and 53 are injured, along with so many other people that were affected by that. And it scared the daylights out of the gay community. Bag checks are now done at the door. Um, People were looking over their shoulder, even more so than they already have in the past. Um, it wasn't good. And we, we've done a lot of that, and people just think it's okay to, to sprout something out and it's all right. It's not. It's not all right. We've lost our sense of humanity and the human factor because we've distanced ourselves from so many people. We're not talking to each other, and it's kind of a universal thing. People are just like, well, you know, that's, that's happening in another country, or that's happening to those people, so I guess we're okay. No, it's not. We're all here together. We're all here to create community. And the big thing is, for like the Tosky, let's say, or Harbor Springs or Sheboygan, wouldn't it be wonderful if you had anybody, everybody in your community that was accepted and productive and people felt valuable, every single person felt valuable in your community. And can you imagine how positive that would be and the, the ramifications of that to your schools, to your teachers? It would be amazing. And we need to work on that. As I said before, after the 2016 election, big crimes in uh, the USA increased for those communities. It hasn't really gotten any better. I will tell you that hate crimes and hate groups during the Obama administration grew by 60% in our country. Hate groups and hate crimes. The hate crimes are the ones that were just reported. There was a lot of them that were not. The transgender community, a lot of those crimes are not reported because they don't want other people to find out their gender or their judgment. They don't want their parents to find out. Same goes for the gay community. Well, if I, if I have a hate crime, everybody's going to know it's going to be in the paper, it's going to help me, people are going to hate me, my parents are going to disown me. It's a trickle-down effect. It's horrible. 69 threats have been called into 54 Jewish community centers in 27 states in the Canadian province since January 1 of this year. That's according to the JCC Association of North America. In February of 2016, Vandals taught nearly 200 tombstones at a Jewish cemetery in St. Louis. I grew up in a family where if something was being cheap, or you were trying, like if you saw something really nice, but you bought something more inexpensive, the common thing to say was, don't be a Jew. Inappropriate. You don't teach your children that. And it's, and it's being said in our school hallways, including Petoskey, Michigan. Not appropriate. It's not, it's not creating community. It's not creating acceptance for anybody. A lot of these students that are being bullied in those things in school have said they cannot find, and, and I know uh, Petoskey High School, this is untrue, but I know for most schools they cannot find one adult in their school that is supportive of them. 
And the lot of things is, you know, I'll get the second one in a minute. This is where my mind wanders because I get so wild. Ever notice in school, we have a lot of people throughout our history that have been gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, but and made achievements, but none of those things are taught in our school. That history is wiped out. We don't hear about those achievements. It's not taught to our students. The curriculum, they don't teach about uh, people that made some huge achievements in our lifetime. And there's a lot. Why? Because they're gay. And you know why are they in fear of that? Because they go right to where the parts go. A lot of times I can't speak at a school because they think, oh, he's gay, he must come in and, and talk to the students all about sex. Or I'm gonna come down here with my mom and go, no, you're gay. And then the, and the, the kid goes home, the parent goes, jeez, can you believe that? I knew if I took him to school and he, he got touched or he got, you know, the magic wand, now my kid's gay, thanks a lot. Doesn't happen that way. But you laugh, and I laugh too, but it's true. A lot of people, like, I, I can't go into a lot of schools because they think I'm going to talk about sex. I think talking about sex to young, very young children is inappropriate. But my whole thing is, would you rather go on the internet, or would you rather bring somebody to your school, or an educator, or a lecturer, or a program, to teach the proper things about community, and talking about those communities, and how they're integrated, with everybody. That's appropriate. And if we're not teaching our history, as I always say, I talk a lot about our history when I go out. There's a lot of achievements out there. I post, a lot of you know, I post LGBT, we're as cool as informed of the fact, every day of the week, except for Saturday, Sunday, I take a little weekend. But I talk about those achievements and facts because I always say, if we're not talking about our history, no one's going to do it for us. And there's a lot of achievements out there. We need to be better educators, and, and if we're going to teach our history, don't exclude things. Include things. So what can you do? I, I give you a lot of these statistics, but what can you do about bullying? <clears throat> Number one, listen to your child or teenager. Listen to your child or your teenager. Put the cell phone away. Put, put the computer away. If that's hard to do, then have a contract with them. Something you can organize with them and, and discuss. A lot of parents don't know, when they're being cyberbullied, a lot of parents don't know how, how to manage a phone. You know, it's not dial-up, you know, on those things. There's actually apps on there. Learn what your children are using. A lot of, a lot of parents don't understand the apps, or like, hey, I don't get all that. You know, what's Snap? Is that Snapchat, something like that they say? Find out, educate yourself on what your children are using, what your teenagers are using. Have a discussion with them. We're not talking anymore, we need to talk. Again, what do you teach your child or teen at home? I have one family that's sitting here tonight that's known since I was about 13 or 14. Uh, and I just love them so much, uh, the Coderac family, they're here with me. They've known me before I came out, and uh, I think Joey said one time, I was New York gay, you know. And she's probably one of the most lovely people because it doesn't matter who you are, you're just a good human being. They love you, they love you regardless. A lot of people that are here that know me, I've, I've been very fortunate. Make sure your child or teen at home is fortunate as well. You know, when they say it takes a village, it does. In the gay community, they say it takes the village people. So, <laughs> boom! Use that joke tonight. Thank you for Share our history about the world when hate and bullying has played a part. We must never repeat our history. What happened with the Holocaust? Talk about it. It didn't happen, by the way. It's not fake news. What happened with the gay community? How we treated uh, our Latino community, how we treated our black community. We need to tell them about that so we're not repeating our history. So we're not hearing, don't be a Jew down the hallway of our schools. I still hear people in my own LGBT community in Chicago. When I'm out and about, I was telling this to the GSA yesterday at the high school, I'm still with friends and I hear people use the word, oh, don't be a faggot. 
I still hear the gay community do that, like they have carte blanche to use it. They don't. Because if you use that term, what happens? Everybody in earshot around you says, well, I guess that gives me permission because their own community has seen it, so it gives me permission to say it to whoever I want. And it's the ripple effect. I dislike that word so much. It's hard for me to say when I'm up here, but it's a learning, learning tool. Make your stance known, be a positive role model. I know a lot of you sitting here, I know some of you very well. You have been. God bless you. Utilize positive role models in the curriculum. Talk about our history, all history. Don't leave out the LGBT history, please. Find out who, who was one of the first people that created the computer. There was a movie on him. How many of you know about that? That's exactly what I mean. Learn your history.